there are persistent reports of livestock being infected, of animals born with extraordinary deformities. Growing numbers of children are suffering from leukemia, or genetic deformities, which doctors connect to the disaster. This month, eight-year-old Sergei went into intensive care, suffering from cancer and blood poisoning. 24 hours later, he was dead. Over 30 years ago, the world's worst nuclear disaster sent radioactive material hundreds of miles from the destroyed nuclear power plant. 50,000 people abandoned it overnight. It's now a ghost town contaminated with radiation. As I'm sure you immediately guessed, we're talking about Chernobyl. But today's discussion won't be about the dramatic events of the notorious incident, nor the locals who were pushed out of their homes by the disaster. Today we're taking a look at the residents of Chernobyl who never got to leave, and are now surviving against all odds. The animals. We'll be showing some of the most shocking and disturbing rare photos of the radiation's devastating effect on the wildlife. So if you're an animal lover or easily squeamish, then this video might be hard to watch. These are Chernobyl lambs. Their mothers were born when the radioactive plume from the burning Russian reactor arrived over Britain. Two years on, the lambs too have been contaminated. Radioactive cesium. Farmers like Dennis Halliday blame the Ministry of Agriculture for waiting seven weeks before warning them of the danger to their flocks. In those seven weeks before restrictions were imposed, irradiated mutton in, uh, went into the food chain and this shouldn't have occurred. Now, if you have thousands of sheep going into the food chain, then obviously hundreds of thousands of human beings have actually been, um, if you like, subjected to eating contaminated mutton. It is alleged that more than 50,000 sheep, which had been grazing on contaminated pastures, reached the shops before the Ministry of Agriculture decided to act. When we think about the damage caused by Chernobyl, we often picture cases like this, in which young children unable to develop properly suffer from deformed limbs. Perhaps even more disturbing are cases like this, Although this photo looks like it shows a very young child, it is reported to actually depict a 15-year-old boy born with severe birth defects who lives in a facility with about 170 children and teenagers with similar conditions not far from zones contaminated with radiation. Some sources claim that after Chernobyl, congenital birth defects actually increased by 250%. However, still other sources, such as a study that The Guardian reported on in 2021, suggest that children of parents who were exposed to the Chernobyl radiation carry no more DNA mutations than children born to any other parents. It seems that, for now, the jury is still out, and the discussion still wide open on this complex topic. It is still debated the extent to which congenital birth defects can be attributed to Chernobyl radiation, if at all. However, it is extremely interesting to note that physicians in the area ostensibly report a significant rise in the number of congenital conditions since that dark day in 1986. A 2010 study led by a U.S. researcher is said to have found a correlation between dramatically high rates of certain congenital birth defects and the presence of hazardous levels of strontium-90 in 48% of 20,000 women tested. This included microcephaly, which is when a baby's head is smaller than it should be, and infants with this condition often have smaller brains that might not have developed properly. At another children's house for those with severe disabilities is two-year-old Nadia. She reportedly suffers from hydrocephaly, which is an abnormal buildup of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain. She also is said to have difficulty absorbing nutrients and has brain damage that causes joints and muscle dysfunction. In all the affected countries, medical care is basic. In Russia, there's now evidence that corrupt businessmen and government officials are stealing money promised to the victims and threatening the lives of people who try to expose them. 
Last month, this Russian doctor who treats Chernobyl victims was brutally beaten and left with a broken jaw. His crime? He had just testified in front of a parliamentary committee investigating Chernobyl frauds. Seeing the impact of the Chernobyl disaster on humans is both incredibly sad and deeply terrifying. But it was this research that led me to wonder how the radiation would affect the animals in the area. After all, they never got to evacuate. Well, what I found was extremely surprising, some for the better and some for the worse. Many of us have heard that Chernobyl's animals and wildlife have mutated since being exposed to high levels of radiation after the nuclear power plant exploded. These animals suffered radiation-induced mutations, such as facial disfigurements that made it impossible for them to eat, extra legs and feet, and abnormal coloring. Their offspring will show the effects of radiation in the third generation. Examples, white eyes instead of red, atrophied wings, or no wings, unfit for life. Many of the mutations were deadly, and the animals didn't survive long after being born. I know exactly what I imagined thinking about the mutated animals in Chernobyl, and I'm sure you pictured the same thing. You've probably seen the infamous photo of the Chernobyl mutant piglet. The piglet barely even resembles a piglet, with more legs than you can count, though I counted at least six, but one of them could have been a tail, I'm really not sure. The poor animal obviously died soon after being born and has been preserved in Ukraine's Chernobyl Museum. It appears to have a severe congenital deformity called dipygus. Dipygus makes the body fork to the left and to the right at the torso and often causes extra legs to grow. As you can see from this angle, it looks like the poor creature also grew extra but deformed legs in the front of its body as well as the many in the back. Another piglet, newly born in 1989, was born with almost as severe mutations. Looking at these mutated newborn pigs alongside photos of normal, healthy piglets is jarring and really shows how extreme these differences are. Take a look at this poor calf born with a badly deformed mouth and tongue. Not only does it look painful, but I can't imagine how this little guy would ever be able to function normally. This one is truly heartbreaking, as the debilitating deformities on this animal are so bad that it seems the poor thing never really had a chance. There's an interesting backstory behind this photo in particular. One source reports that in 1990, when the number of genetically malformed animals was rising noticeably, one man took photographs of the creatures, including this eight-legged foal, and sent them to Mikhail Gorbachev in a bid to spark support for the investigation into this problem. However, sources say he received no reply. Shown here are great tit birds collected near Chernobyl. On the left, a normal one, but the individual on the right is suffering from a facial tumor. These are just some examples of the crazy deformities of the mutant animals of Chernobyl, but what happened next to the mutants in the exclusion zone is somehow even crazier and almost unbelievable. Because of the way the fallout fell immediately after the explosion, some areas are still really very radioactive. This is about 1,500 times normal background radiation. It's not harmful in small doses, but you wouldn't want to spend too long here at all. Over a hundred radioactive elements scattered to the areas surrounding the explosion and released 400 times more radiation than when the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. All the predictions for the future of Chernobyl were that everything there would die after being exposed to so much radioactivity and that nothing would ever grow again. And in the old town of Chernobyl, they want to knock down homes that will never be habitable again. But locals are fighting this, wanting to return. Or at least nothing would grow for centuries. And this wasn't just a wild guess. The assumption was made based on how long it takes radioactive compounds to decompose. Scientists expected the radioactive elements to decay and eventually disappear from the area. But in Chernobyl, the decaying is taking far longer than expected. The radioactivity is mostly in the soil, where it's lasting longer than expected, 
though the level has lowered in the water. What this means is that the animals and plants still living near Chernobyl will also probably have high levels of radioactivity far longer than anyone ever expected, and no humans will be moving back for thousands of years. But as you'll see, something very strange is happening in Chernobyl, despite the area's high radioactivity. Things are growing in Chernobyl. Wildlife is not only living in the exclusion zone, but against all odds, they are thriving. Plants have taken back the city, growing over everything, and animals wander the streets that once belonged to humans. I'm not sure exactly what I was expecting, maybe not animals with fur that glows, but possibly some extra limbs or eyes and certainly lots of tumors, maybe more creatures that resemble that piglet, but that's not exactly the case, not at all. Let's start at the beginning. The initial blast of radiation turned a large portion of the leaves of the tree surrounding the nuclear power plant a rusty red color. Not quite like the red leaves of fall, but close. The pine trees were killed instantly in the radioactive blast. Later, most of these eerie red and radioactive trees were bulldozed before they were buried to avoid them growing mutated trees with their seeds. As you'll see, this was a pretty pointless endeavor. The initial blast also killed a large population of the rodents and insects that were living in the ground of the pine trees as well. All of this followed the predictions of scientists. Following the nuclear disaster, there was a thorough evacuation of around 50,000 people in Pripyat. The people who were forced to leave couldn't take much with them, and they had to leave most of their possessions behind, even their pets. That's right, people left their cats and dogs that they loved, abandoning them for fear that they had been contaminated and would be radioactive when they left with them. They weren't even allowed to bring them if they wanted to take a radioactive risk, because no pets were actually allowed to leave the exclusion zone. When the evacuees left the area, they were convinced they would eventually be reunited with their pets. Unfortunately, they were wrong, and most of their pets were exterminated. As the buses began to leave, dogs howled and ran after their owners to no avail. Disturbingly, after people left, many Soviet Union conscripts were sent in in order to shoot any of the stray animals they came across in the exclusion zone. But they didn't manage to kill all of the pets, and we'll get to that in a minute. Maria Shovkuta has as much respect for radiation as she does for the authorities. She tells us how she sent them packing more than once. Ordered to leave in 1986, she came back a year later to live in the house in which she was born. She's 87 tomorrow. The levels they found weren't high, and this is the garden she's fed herself from every day. Her only real complaint is the lack of rain and the potato beetles eating their way through her spuds. Thank you very much. It was lovely to meet you. Maria waves us off, and we leave her to get back to one of the quietest lives in the world. The part that didn't make sense to me was that many of the cows and sheep that people owned were evacuated alongside them, and yet still pets hadn't been allowed to leave with their owners. But for years after the blast, those same cows and sheep often grew sick, and even their offspring did the same. Kiev's a hundred miles from Chernobyl. No one here was evacuated after the nuclear disaster, yet today surveys show that cancer and blood diseases have risen in some areas dramatically. Equally, vast tracts of fertile countryside have been contaminated and used as a dumping ground for radioactive waste. There are persistent reports of livestock being infected, of animals born with extraordinary deformities, and of milk showing high levels of radiation. And though it is unlikely many people enter the exclusion zone to check, I assume that the exact same thing happened to the animals that were left behind. Many of the farm animals who survived Chernobyl's initial blast had increased genetic abnormalities, 
and oddly, it was noticed that the amount of deformities in these animals increased again a few years after the accident. This may have been because more radiation was released from the sarcophagus that covered the nuclear core, but this is just a guess. These same animals struggled to reproduce because of the radiation they had been exposed to. When they did give birth, about 400 of their offspring had such severe deformities from the radiation that tragically, very few of them lived more than a few hours after being born. The types of deformities were just like that mutant piglet photo, facial disfigurements, extra limbs, abnormal coloring, and they were often much smaller. Even if the offspring survived, the cows produced radioactive milk, which shortened their calves' lifespans. And the deformed farm animals that were born after the blast very rarely managed to reproduce, essentially ending the line of those radioactive animals after just one or two generations. What was causing these noticeable mutations? The energy from the radiation damaged or even broke some of the DNA molecules of the animals. If the damage was bad enough, the animal died soon after. But if it didn't kill them, it often created a mutation or cancer when the damage couldn't be repaired. And this is exactly what happened to the farm animals outside of Chernobyl. But what about all the animals inside the exclusion zone? Something else entirely. There's no doubt that the radiation affected the health of many of the animals living in Chernobyl right after the blast. But instead of slowly dying off after a few generations that were exposed to radioactivity, there are hundreds of animals living and surviving in the highly radioactive area. How is this possible? It goes against all of the predictions for Chernobyl. The radioactivity should have produced mutations that affected the reproductive ability of the animals and made it almost impossible for them to survive. But that isn't what's happening. For the animals alive in Chernobyl today, their mutations aren't as visible as I expected, given that they live with so much radiation. Some previous studies claim to have found serious impacts of radioactivity, but so far this team's work has found little effect outside the most contaminated areas. The studies are, are quite confused as to whether or not that's the case. So actually our study here in Chernobyl, it's, it's about trying to understand more about the way in which the animals in Chernobyl are faring. If that's showing no real significant change at a population level, then perhaps we then need to start rethinking our assessment of exactly what level could be described as safe. Let's take a look at the dogs that were left behind by the people who fled Chernobyl. Despite the fact that they are living in an area that's so unsafe for humans, the now stray dogs have actually become some of the largest population in Chernobyl. And you might be surprised to hear that they are actually thriving. Well, sort of. We don't know the exact numbers of just how many dogs there are in the exclusion zone, but it's been estimated that there are over a thousand dogs living there. What's even weirder to consider is that it's believed that about 250 dogs are actually living at the power plant itself, as close to the radioactive hotspot as they can get. Another 225 are living within the city of Chernobyl, just as close. And somehow, they are all still alive. What I wanted to know was how the radioactivity affected the dogs. Well, most of the dogs living in Chernobyl don't live past four years. Some maybe get to six, meaning that almost all of the ones running around the city are quite young. In fact, tons of them are still just puppies. However, over 30 years after the explosion, radiation isn't the only issue facing the dogs. Now the cold and lack of food is said to cause more of a threat to their lives. Don't get me wrong though, sources say many of them are highly radioactive, but this is mostly because like the other animals around them, they are eating radioactive food. The dogs specifically have increased levels of radiation in their fur. But despite this, the dogs can actually be adopted. The strays are caught and then cleaned of radioactive dust. In fact, many of the Chernobyl puppies have surprisingly been reported to no longer be radioactive even though they are living so close to such high levels of radioactivity. 
These puppies are the first animals to have ever been taken out of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. But dogs aren't the only animals living in Chernobyl. Bears, wolves, foxes, lynx, bison, deer, moose, beavers, badgers, boars, and a creature called raccoon dogs, which is a subspecies that isn't quite a dog or a raccoon, have all made Chernobyl their home. As well, tons of fish and birds have filled the skies and streams. I'm standing now above the cooling ponds of the old reactors. Take a look at these fish. These wells catfish have grown up to eight feet long. They've been described as radioactive mutants. And it's true, studies have shown damage to their DNA from radioactive mud in which they feed. But by every other measure, they are healthy and numerous. The truth is, they're this big because they like bread from visitors and no one is allowed to catch them. But each animal seems to be reacting differently to the prolonged exposure to radioactive material, which in itself is really interesting. So, what are the mutations? Well, the animals don't exactly look like what we expect mutants to look like. They almost look normal, even if they aren't quite. The main reason for this is because most of the serious mutations, the ones you can see, happened right after the explosion, and most of the animals with the highest levels of radioactivity and mutations died soon after that. This doesn't mean that the animals in Chernobyl are normal, though. They might look like any other dog or wolf, but genetically, they are mutants, and they are highly radioactive. According to a 2001 study, the Chernobyl disaster caused an increase in mutation rates in both plants and animals, in many cases by a factor of 20. Their livestock is back in the zone. Here, radiation is low, and now the elderly peasants are tolerated by the authorities. Some dodged the evacuation and never left Chernobyl. The militia tried to catch me, but I hid in the forest. I lived off two sacks of mushrooms I'd picked. Voles have a much higher chance of developing cataracts. Fish in the contaminated water are said to be much bigger than anywhere else. Frogs that live in the area are often darker than the same species that live outside, possibly as a defense against the radiation while birds living in Chernobyl have a higher frequency of albinism and developing tumors. Birds are some of the most affected of all animals in Chernobyl. Studies from the 90s and early 2000s show that birds living in the exclusion zone often also had deformed beaks, bent tail feathers, deformed air sacs, smaller brains, malformed sperm, and cataracts. Something else that's really strange about the birds in the exclusion zone is that since the disaster, many of the rarer species have reportedly been affected by the radiation at a much higher rate than the more common species. In some cases, sources say entire populations of some of the rarer birds have drastically declined. Why? Well, right now, no one is really sure yet exactly why. Even though the disaster occurred over 30 years ago, there is a lot of research lacking to actually make conclusions about why certain animals are being affected differently by the radiation. One guess is pretty interesting, though. In one study, there were less birds with brightly colored feathers in Chernobyl than was expected, and the assumption was that they had been more affected by the radiation than the birds with the duller feathers who seemed to have the same numbers as the same species outside of the contamination zone. The reason for this might have to do with their antioxidant supply. Birds with high antioxidants tend to have brighter colors, but those antioxidants are used in their coloring and therefore can't fight off the free radicals of radiation. This means that the amount of radiation might not matter when it comes to killing off some species of birds, but rather how their antioxidant levels respond to the radiation. On the occasions that some of the animals were tested for radioactivity, the levels that they live with are shocking. Wild boars have especially high radioactive levels. This makes sense, though, as the soil is probably the most radioactive part of Chernobyl, and the boars mainly eat tubers and roots. 
What I kept wondering about was why humans can suffer from acute radiation poisoning, and yet none of the animals seem to be. These animals and plants are exposed to chronic radiation, not just acute, so it makes sense that we would assume the animals would be far more affected than humans, right? In comparison, the WHO had assumed that of 200,000 people who were exposed to the Chernobyl radiation, over 2,000 would die from an illness related to the radiation, like thyroid cancer. Yet, overall, the animals are actually recovering remarkably well from the radiation, far better than I had ever expected to find. This looks like a healthier ecosystem than areas outside the zone in Ukraine. Absolutely, absolutely much more healthy. More important, absence of people, absence of their activity. Inside Chernobyl, wolves, deer, moose and wild boar are actually living in higher populations than outside. Probably just because humans aren't interfering with their lives. But the radiation doesn't seem to be killing them off or affecting their ability to reproduce. Many studies conclude that there is no evidence that animals are dying in any noticeable number because of radiation, even though the areas observed featured high contamination. One thing I found really strange is that the radiation dramatically affected a group that I didn't even think about, bugs. What people guessed would happen to the animals exposed to radioactivity after the explosion that they would all die came true for the insects in the area. There's a strange phenomenon that some creatures survived fairly well near high radiation, while others didn't at all. Wherever there is higher radioactivity in Chernobyl, there's way less insects and spiders. It seems as though insects' lifespans are much shorter because of the radiation. There are far less bees, butterflies, spiders, grasshoppers, and dragonflies in Chernobyl one bug that has been studied is the Chernobyl firebug, which actually looks mutated compared to non-radioactive firebugs. But again, the mutation isn't what we expect and is far more subtle. The firebugs were collected from the most contaminated parts of the red forest and have deformed patterns on their backs, such as missing eye spots. There hasn't been a ton of studies on how the radiation has changed the animal's DNA, but one bug that has been studied is the fruit fly. The fruit flies in Chernobyl show evidence of genetic damage from the radioactivity. These flies showed a much higher rate of mutation and deformities. Nothing crazy like more legs or eyes, though sometimes on an individual basis they did. But they just didn't look quite the same as flies living outside of Chernobyl. This discovery is technically a direct contradiction of other studies and implies that the radiation is greatly affecting some of the wildlife. But why are bugs dying and not wolves, boars, or mice? Why isn't the radiation causing the same effect on all the wildlife? The best answer we have right now is that plants and animals may be way more resistant to radiation than was ever previously believed and that they just might be able to tolerate more radioactivity than humans. As well, much of the wildlife living in the exclusion zone is actually adapting in ways that allows them to not only survive, but thrive. <laughs>